So today, Dr. Scholz, we're going to be talking about orchiectomies. Now, this is something that I've seen actually posted in our comments section a lot. It seems like some people are wondering, is it a good option? Um, some people are wondering what it is or their doctor suggested it to them. And this is really, uh, we see this internationally quite a bit, not so much in the US, but we do know in the US it's happening as well. So first of all, what is an orchiectomy? So surgical removal of the testicles accomplishes the same thing as say a Lupron shot does. This is the methodology that was utilized prior to the advent of Lupron in the 1980s. And it has been shown in large randomized trials to be as effective at eliminating testosterone as Lupron or Firmagon or Orgovix or all these uh, products that stop testicular production of testosterone. The difference, of course, is that it's an irreversible step. It is... Um, uh, still utilized in the United States. We have to remember urologists are the primary caregivers for most men with prostate cancer. The attraction is that it's a single, simple, one-time procedure. You don't need to have ongoing shots. If, uh, if someone was in a situation where they were having to pay for Lupron shots, it would save some money. Most of the time, insurance covers Lupron shots. But uh, uh, it is less and less popular for aesthetic reasons. And I probably also because there's no coming back from it other than um, implementing testosterone replacement, actually giving a patient with prostate cancer testosterone, which is a big subject of its own. So what side effects are associated with an orchiectomy? All the same side effects that you have with a Lupron shot. It's a, it's a safe procedure. I don't think I've ever seen a complication from the surgery itself. Uh, side effects of low testosterone are uh, muscle loss, weight gain, hot flashes, loss of libido, osteoporosis, these are all the things that we have to compensate for in men who have low testosterone levels. Is there ever a time you would suggest it? I've never recommended an orchiectomy. There are economical alternatives to orchiectomy, such as estrogen patches. Estrogen blocks testosterone and uh, is an inexpensive way to block testosterone compared to say something like Lupron or Firmagon. These shots cost hundreds of dollars a month. The only problem with estrogen is that it can induce breast enlargement. So men that are thinking in those terms have to consider perhaps some prophylactic uh, radiation treatments to the nipple area to prevent breast enlargement. But other than that, estrogen works quite well. Oral estrogens can cause blood clots. So if uh, anyone is considering estrogen, it needs to, either needs to be administered with an injection into the muscle, there's products like this available over in uh, Europe, or um, with a transdermal patch, which is what we use here in the United States. These are quite effective at getting testosterone down. Oral testosterone, when it, uh, we swallow it, it goes through the liver and it creates a lot of uh, clotting enzymes and it's clearly been shown to increase the incidence of blood clots. So oral estrogens are really contraindicated in men. Does removal of the testicles affect PSA at all? Just as Lupron or Firmagon or Orgovix uh, remove testosterone, uh, this hormone therapy, so-called hormone therapy, is so efficacious, it will almost always cause a reduction in PSA. And in a good majority of men, it'll cause the PSAs to drop all the way to zero. Back in the 1990s, when uh, radiation was a little scary and uh, we weren't big fans of surgery even back then, uh, we would treat people just with testosterone deprivation alone. You can keep localized prostate cancer in check for 10, 15, 20 years with that methodology. The problem, of course, is that it doesn't cure the cancer. And, it, uh, and the hormonal therapy has a number of its own side effects that are undesirable. So one of the conversations I had with a support group leader is he himself had an orchiectomy and then he was saying that, you know, obviously having to do pills or injections with regular hormone therapy versus the orchiect um, orchiectomy could be what, quite cumbersome. My thought process was you're doing something permanent versus temporary. So the concept is, can you go into a remission and then get your testosterone back, hopefully? So how do you um, contextualize those two pictures? I mean, the concern that it's inconvenient to take shots, for example, is not a very good concern because we have shots that'll last six months, uh, in, uh, implants that'll last a year. That's not a very intrusive uh, situation. Uh, however, the dealing with the day when it looks like the disease has been in remission a long time and, and someone is interested in taking a holiday from having low testosterone, so-called so intermittent therapy, is gonna come in a, in a large 
proportion of men. And it is possible to administer testosterone to these people. That has come up a lot over the years because we've discovered that with Lupron and Firmagon and these other injectable medicines that uh, in some cases, testosterone doesn't recover when it's stopped. So we were confronted with a difficult question. Is it safe to give testosterone to someone who's whose uh, testicular function is not returning uh, in someone that's been on Lupron for a long time. And uh, we concluded that the testosterone that's being given exogenously, say with a cream or a shot, is uh, really no different than the testosterone that comes from the testicles. So large clinical trials have been done showing that intermittent exposure to testosterone for men that were previously under control with testosterone deprivation is safe, that, that you can either allow natural testosterone return, or you can administer testosterone and create artificially normal levels of testosterone in the bloodstream and get the same effect. And uh, this uh, policy for us is very routine, although uh, there are uh, still doctors out there that, uh, you know, they say, aren't we just putting gasoline on the fire? not realizing that prostate cancer is different, that it is a very slow growing disease. You can monitor it with PSA levels and that studies have shown that it is safe to periodically re-expose the cancer to some testosterone, monitor it closely, and then if the PSA starts going too high, then uh, consider stopping uh, the testosterone or reinstituting Lupron shots or whatever it is that uh, you've been using to control uh, to keep the testosterone levels low. So besides better quality of life, are there any other advantages to intermittent hormone therapy? Well, one thing that has come to our attention with the advent of these new, more accurate PSMA PET scans is since these uh, small metastatic spots can be uh, radiated with modern SBRT or proton therapy or IMRT, might it not be advantageous to allow some testosterone to come back and if there's a small spot of prostate cancer that's been flying below the radar, temporarily awaken that cancer so that it becomes visible on a PSMA PET scan so that it can be eliminated with radiation. There aren't any studies proving that this policy will be advantageous, but since we're already doing intermittent therapy anyway, it kind of makes sense that if and when the PSA starts to rise to get a PSMA PET scan, and if we find one or two metastatic sites to try and eliminate them with radiation. In the past, we always thought of metastatic sites just being the tip of the iceberg because our scans were so poor, we knew there would be other, more spots coming along later. But the PSMA PET scans are much more accurate than what we've had in the past. And it is possible that the few small spots that are detected may be the only spots. And we are seeing some patients that are staying in durable remissions after uh, uh, receiving radiation to metastatic sites. What I'm getting from this conversation is that an orchiectomy should not really ever be an option for somebody who is looking, who is newly diagnosed and wants to get a cure and is going to do short-term hormone therapy. It seems like such a drastic um, concept to do an orchiectomy when they are thinking about short course hormone therapy and the possibility that they could go into remission and gain their testosterone back. Yes, exactly. So if it is to be considered, it's really for someone with widespread metastatic disease who perhaps has already been on Lupron for a period of time and his physician believes that this patient won't be a candidate for intermittent therapy in the future. And as a cost-saving measure or convenience to have an orchiectomy. And uh, that subgroup perhaps arguably could be considered for orchiectomy. Since that's such a drastic move to have one, and if they are going to consider having an orchiectomy, what measures of triple checking the diseases in that stage do they need to take before making such a drastic move? To me, the only patient that uh, it, one could argue will need constant testosterone deprivation for the rest of their life is someone who's been on hormone therapy and we can't get the PSA down, and the disease is progressing. Those uh, patients, uh, we're certainly not going to be stopping hormone treatment. But uh, most men have hormone-sensitive disease. They, their PSAs are declining, and uh, many times they go to undetectable levels. Those individuals, I would think, still do have hope that they may be able to take a holiday someday. Thank you, Dr. Scholz, because this is a really big topic internationally, it seems, and it's still prevalent here in the U.S., but, you know, since it is a replacement for something like Lupron, I think it's really good that you contextualize the difference between something that's permanent and then something that could possibly be temporary, such as hormone therapy, especially intermittent hormone therapy, so we really appreciate that. So today we talked about orchiectomies versus hormone therapy. 
Well, one of the reasons we're talking about this, and I know some people are like, why is PCRI talking about it, is first of all, I've seen you guys write about this in your comment section, and some medical teams are presenting this as an option for you. The key things I want you to know are that an orchiectomy is a very permanent solution, and it's really, in our world, in the big picture of prostate cancer, for a specific type of case that you heard Dr. Scholes describe, somebody who can't get off of hormone therapy, and the PSA is just not going down. Whereas with hormone therapy patients, a lot of times you could actually go on a holiday and it can be intermittent and you can see the PSA go down, you take a break from hormone therapy, you regain testosterone, and then if you need it again, it's there as an option. So it's really the permanent concept versus on and off again or temporary. The biggest thing I want you to know is that this is your decision. It's your decision with your medical team whether to get this procedure or not, or whether to go on hormone therapy. If you would like more information about hormone therapies, um, we've created dozens of videos for you, and it'll help you contextualize that information for your case. If you need help with your specific case, you can visit our website, pcri.org, and talk to one of our helpline advisors. Um, they're really there to help answer questions specific to what your needs are. And if, you know, please remember PCRI is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you would like to donate, we would love that. Uh, it helps all these videos go across the YouTube platform and all around the world. Please remember, you're not alone, and I hope you have a great day.